Hi everyone, it's Bob here from Insidium. It's Top Tip Tuesday time and today we're going to have a look at mesh tools and I'm going to show you how we can create this really nice cutting laser rig. This is using mesh tools ray line and then we're able to spawn sparks particles where those rays hit scene objects. So let's start the clock. In our scene we have a floor plane and we have this animated null object and it's animated on the Z position and the heading angle to give us a bit of position and rotation animation. Right, so we're going to bring in a mesh tools ray line. Let's go to Insidium, mesh tools, bring in a default mesh tools ray line which gives us this object. The ray line fires out these rays and if they intersect with collision geometry the rays bounce. Let's go to the ray line object tab. This is where we put our collision geometry. So let's put in our plane. And now if I hit R and rotate the ray line down, when those rays hit the geometry, they bounce off. And it keeps going, those rays, until they reach their max length, which by default is set to 500 centimeters. If we increase this, they'll go more and they'll bounce off any collision geometry that we have. We're going to use single shot mode though and that means if we click this it will bounce off the collision geometry and that's where the ray will end but we'll get this collision point here these green collision points. So let's put our ray line as a child we'll just position it and we'll put it as a child of our animated null and now when we hit play you'll see that that ray line is now animating with the null and we're getting our contact points obviously updating where those rays hit our collision geometry. So we're going to kind of set these up as lasers. So let's go to ray line, we'll go to the display tab, we'll switch off gradient display, we'll switch off the display of all of the contact points and the start points, we don't need to see those. And let's go to basic, change the colour from green to kind of an orange colour. Now what we're able to do is where those contacts were made, we're able to create particles. To do that, we'll go to the points tab of Rayline and it's the contact points we're looking for. Here we go, look, and we can add an emitter. So let's add an emitter and we'll call that one, um, let's call that one emitter contact. And if we hit play, now we have got a particle on the contact points of where the ray line is hitting the collision geometry. And now we've got particles, we can do things like spawn particles from them, which is what's going to make our sparks. Before we do, we want to trace a line that our lasers are creating, and we can do that by making a trail with these particles. Let's go to Insidium, X Particles, Generators, XB Trail. And in the Object tab, let's drag in our emitter contact. And in the trail, let's go to the basic tab and change it from green to kind of an orange color. Now when we hit play, we get that traced path of our contact particles. Very good. Now we want to make our sparks. And all we need to do is spawn from the position of these contact particles. So let's go to Insidium, X Particles, Modifiers, Generate, and we're going to go to the XP Spawn modifier. The spawn modifier, let's go to the object tab, it requires a new spawning emitter. So we can add one here, look, add emitter. And then let's just call that one emitter spawn. And in the spawn um, modifier object tab, we can leave most of this default. We want the new particles to come from the source particle position. We want the direction to be random spherical. Um, Spawned particle speed absolute means it'll get its speed from the emitter. So let's set that now. We'll go to the emitter, emission, and let's give them maybe a speed of 100 and a variation of 80. And back to the XP spawn. We don't need 300 per frame to be spawned. Let's put it on maybe 75 with 15 variation. And now when we hit play, you're going to see, yes, look, we're getting spawned particles. Now, there are no physics in this scene just yet. We need these to be pulled down to the floor with gravity. So let's go to Insidium X Particles, Modifiers Motion, and bring in a gravity. Leave it on default. So now, yep, yeah, we're getting something that's looking a little bit more realistic. Good. So now we want to color these. Let's go to the Emitter Spawn, Display tab. 
We'll change the editor display from squares to lines. We're going to change the color mode to gradient parameter. And we're going to map this gradient to the age. That's fine. But these colors aren't right. So let's just get rid of one of the knots. The first knot, when they're born, we want them to be almost white hot. Then, very soon after, we want them to go to a very rich orange hot color. And then we want them to gradually fade to black as they're cooling and just becoming scraps of metal. So maybe something like that. So let's hit play. Yep, that's looking pretty cool. So there we have got our animated ray line making contact with our collision object. Where it makes contact, it creates a particle which we're able to trace with our trail. And we're also able to spawn spark particles from the position of those contact particles to give us our spark. So obviously this is just a very simple viewport setup, but you can see very quickly we can create some pretty cool effects using the fantastic procedural mesh tools ray line.